sleek and sharp-edged, and clothed in that beautiful bare stainless steel, the DeLorean looked truly space age. It was an extraordinary achievement. To this day, no car has ever reached production faster. John DeLorean had realised his sports car dream. But there was just one problem. It was terrible. So bad that sitting here right now, I don't quite know where to begin. But let's begin with the engine. DeLorean was going to use the rotary engine from the Mazda RX-7. Cost and expediency meant he didn't. Bad decision. What he ended up with was a V6 that had been jointly developed by Renault, Peugeot and Volvo, producing a not very exotic 130 horsepower. The thing weighed quite a lot because of the stainless steel panels, so performance was terrible. With this manual gearbox, it would do 0 to 60 in nine and a half seconds, but it was slower with the three-speed automatic than most Americans wanted. So it wasn't a performance car at all. Good Lord. It wasn't a very refined car either. In throwing it together so fast, the engineers had had to build the DeLorean with whatever they could lay their hands on. The brakes come from a Ford Cortina, the glove box from a Volkswagen, the door locks, Austin Allegro, gear knob, Renault Fuego. You're not really robbing from royalty, are you? And then there's the handling. Oh, my God. It's terrible. Halfway through the corner, can you just back off? It wants to understeer immediately. Wow. I mean, it's relatively controllable, but on the public road, good God, it's an accident waiting to happen. 